So guys, what have we decided? Are we going to continue to use erythritol in our recipes or are all the remaining erythritol bags ending in the trash? Let's talk about this today. Hi everyone, my name is Nupur and I am the host from the YouTube channel called Keto Curries. For the last couple of days, we've been bombarded by news that states that erythritol is linked to cardiovascular disease. Yikes, doesn't sound good. We have our reasons to freak out. But, but, from my experience of being a scientist, I can tell you that very, very often when science reaches the news outlets, it is interpreted very superficially and only the juicy tidbits are projected. After I finished my five years of postdoctoral work from Stanford University and my manuscript was published, the news outlets made the most bizarre claims about my work. It is really frustrating. Also regarding erythritol and this study, there are news outlets that are claiming that keto diet is secretly killing you or keto diet is not as useful as you thought it would be. Keto diet is not erythritol diet. Guys, it blows my mind. Well, after all this experience, I definitely always like to dive into the original manuscript, read it for myself and then draw conclusions. I can walk you through the manuscript. We can do this together. So before we make major changes in our diet and before we freak out and feel like we are going to die of cardiovascular disease, <laughs> let's quiet the noise and wait till we are done reading this. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. I have my notes here. I have the original manuscript. Okay. First, let's quickly talk about erythritol a little bit. It is a zero calorie sweetener. It is found in minimal amounts in certain fruits and vegetables. One important point to note is that our body also synthesizes erythritol from glucose. Important point when we read the manuscript. Erythritol looks like sugar, feels like sugar, and it is produced in large scales by fermenting glucose from corn, wheat, etc. It is very popular among keto dieters and also people who want to lose weight or people with diabetes because it does not alter blood glucose levels. Most of the erythritol that we eat is absorbed into the bloodstream. It circulates in the blood for a while and then most of it is excreted through the urine. All right, that's all about erythritol. Now let's get to the manuscript. This paper has been published in a journal called Nature Medicine, which is a prestigious journal from the Nature Publishing Group. Let us first read the title. I think that is interesting. The title says that the artificial sweetener erythritol and cardiovascular event risk. So even the authors have not made big claims about erythritol being linked to or causing cardiovascular event risk. Very unlike what a lot of people are reporting, right? Okay. All right, so this paper can be broadly divided into two parts. The first part deals with correlation studies and the second part deals with some mechanistic studies. So they start off by using an untargeted metabolomics platform by which they correlate the levels of metabolites in the blood to cardiovascular disease event risk factors like heart attack, stroke, and even death. This study was untargeted, meaning that they did not do the study to specifically look for a correlation between erythritol and cardiovascular disease. They basically broadly looked at all the different metabolites that correlated with cardiovascular disease event risk factors. They found that multiple sugar alcohols correlated with cardiovascular disease events of which erythritol, which is also sugar alcohol, had a very strong positive correlation. In simple terms, people with a high prevalence of cardiovascular disease were found to have higher erythritol in their blood. One important point to note is that this study was done in patients that already had high cardiovascular disease risk factors. For example, there were patients that were diabetic, they were obese, uh, they, were, they were smokers, they were patients with high cholesterol, etc. So these patients already had metabolic diseases. Important point to note. So looking at this fraction of the data, I suppose 
This was enough information for the media outlets to say that erythritol is linked to cardiovascular disease. Wait, not so fast. Let's look at the caveats here. We are interested in knowing whether consuming erythritol is linked to cardiovascular disease, isn't it? Here, there is no information about whether these patients consumed any erythritol at all before their blood was drawn. And I mentioned to you before that erythritol is also synthesized in our bodies from glucose. And it is very possible that given that these patients had metabolic diseases to start with, that their bodies could be producing more erythritol in their blood and that it is not coming from the erythritol that they have may or may not have consumed. Do I make sense? Second point, it is impossible from a correlation study to draw a conclusion about causation. For example, high cardiovascular disease risk, high erythritol. Is erythritol causing this? I don't know. It could be that because you have a high cardiovascular risk, your body is generating more of this and that this is merely a marker to show that you have a high cardiovascular risk. Okay, so done with the first part of the manuscript. Are we freaking out a little less? Let's take a deep breath and continue. The next part is the mechanistic part of the paper. So because they found a positive correlation of erythritol with a thrombotic disease, meaning a disease where blood clots are involved, they wanted to test whether erythritol can impact platelet function. As you know, platelets are one of the major players in blood clot formation. So that seems like a reasonable thing to test. And they tested this um, using in vitro experiments, meaning in test tubes and, and plates in the lab. And they also used a, a mouse model. We'll talk about this one by one. For their in vitro experiments, they used platelet rich plasma, basically the fraction of the blood that is high in platelets. They used this from healthy volunteers. And then they added a stimulus that would basically encourage clot formation. And what they, what they show is that when erythritol is added to the platelets, the blood clot formation is a lot faster and a lot more. They also showed that erythritol can directly activate platelets and they also did experiments using whole blood where they could show that erythritol does increase blood clot formation. In their in vivo experiment, meaning their experiment using a mouse model, they used a model where they injured the artery of a mouse and then they, they gave erythritol to the mouse and tested whether the blood was clotting faster and indeed they did see that. All good, this is all good, but keep in mind, this is in vitro, basically done in a plate and test tube and also done in mice. We want to know if this works inside the human body when we drink erythritol, right? That is what we wanna know. If drinking erythritol is definitely activating our platelets and leading to blood clot formation, we can freak out together. So let's keep going. Let's see if they did that. So they took eight healthy participants and gave them a drink that was that had erythritol. It had 30 grams of erythritol, which, which is a lot, but they said that that is comparable to a pint of keto ice cream and also comparable to commercially available artificially sweetened drinks. Okay. So they gave the participants this drink and then they measured erythritol levels in the blood before and after. And what they found was that erythritol increased 1000 fold above physiological concentrations and stayed high for two days or more, a little more than two days. Wow, 1000 fold increase in erythritol in their blood. But now our question, 1000 fold increase in their blood, does that activate platelets? Does that induce blood clot formation? So let's look if there's data. No data about this. What information we need, what we're waiting for, is that when those healthy people drank erythritol, did you see any activation in their platelets? 
Did you draw blood from those patients and then test those in your in vitro assays to see whether those platelets were coagulating more, forming more blood clots? None of this is done. What's our take home then, guys? The first part of the study was done on patients. It was a correlation study where the patients were not given erythritol to drink. So we can't draw too much out of that. The second part, good studies done in vitro and in mouse. But when it came to the human setting, there is no data. Why are we freaking out? Let me tell you one thing. A lot of times in vitro data and also data done in mice models, unfortunately, or fortunately in this case, but most of the time, mice data don't translate to the human setting. It's a lot more complicated setting. So just looking at the in vitro and the mice data is absolutely not sufficient to say that erythritol is giving you cardiovascular disease and your blood is going to be clotting. Oh my God. Are you, are you happy that we read this together? I am. <laughs> I don't want to speculate as to why that experiment is not in the paper. I feel like it's basic to expect it to be in. But maybe there is going to be another manuscript coming, coming out and then we can have a longer discussion of whether we need to stop consuming erythritol or not. But as of now, this, the research is inconclusive. Do you agree with me? What we need are, are those experiments that we talked about and also some long-term studies on the effects of erythritol consumption would be very helpful. Guys, now do you realize how much damage the media can cause? If only everyone had access to original articles. I understand that scientific jargon is hard to interpret, but in this day and age of social media, you can reach out to people who can help you. I will be more than happy to interpret scientific data for you. So, so do reach out to me. I cannot believe it. Yesterday, I actually heard this licensed doctor saying that healthy volunteers were given erythritol drinks and they looked at how much their blood was clotting. No, they didn't. Okay, anyway, I hope you are a little more at ease now. And let's talk about what we should do moving forward regarding erythritol. Based on this paper, I would not jump to the conclusion that erythritol is going to give me cardiovascular disease and I need to stop it. I, I wouldn't. But something did stand out for me from this paper. They say that when, when participants took 30 grams of erythritol, their blood levels shot up 1000 times. That's a lot, guys. I don't think we should overdo something to the point that levels are shooting up 1000 fold in the blood. So, so how do we solve this problem? I feel like it's not a bad idea to cut back on erythritol or any artificial sweetener for that matter. We don't need to have that much sweet, right? That much. But okay, so to, to put this in context, one teaspoon of erythritol is, is four grams. 30 grams of erythritol is like more than seven teaspoons of erythritol per day. That's a lot. If you're having two cups of coffee and, and, or tea and you're adding half a teaspoon or one teaspoon of erythritol, let's consider half a teaspoon of erythritol, you're going to be consuming four grams of erythritol that day. Maybe with another keto snack or something, eight grams, 10 grams, but let's not overdo it. If you're making your food at home, you can obviously calculate what you're doing. For example, I posted a recipe of butter chicken that has half a teaspoon of erythritol. Hopefully now you're not thinking that any food that has erythritol is going to kill you. So I think we've passed that stage. Let's just calculate the amounts. Half a teaspoon is two grams, five servings. So it's like 0 0.4 grams of erythritol you're going to be eating. And that recipe is delicious. You can, you can enjoy that with no harm done. So, so you can calculate the amount of erythritol you're using and, and, and decide. By the way, I do want to say one thing. I'm not making this video just because I have some recipes with erythritol and I definitely want you guys to like make those and eat those. And I, I will be more than happy to delete my recipes if 
science speaks against a certain ingredient that I've used. If I'm convinced, it'll take me a second to delete it. Anyway, guys, I hope this was of some help and, and let's not make major dietary changes yet. I feel like moderation, moderation is key and let's look out for more scientific data coming out and interpret them with caution. Again, as I mentioned before, I would be more than happy to help you. All right, guys, see you next time with another Indian keto recipe. And I hope in the near future, we are going to have more clarity about artificial sweeteners. I will keep you posted. Bye-bye.